Hey everyone, it's Karen from Mayfly Life. Today I'm doing a pot holder for the very first time in a, a quilt pattern and I'm going to show you how I made it. Okay, I'm just going to show you, uh, I've got on my cutting board currently a piece of fabric that I've cut uh, a straight line, um, a straight edge down uh, this one side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, a 90 degree so that it's nice and even and everything is straight and what I'm doing is I'm gonna sort of do like a patchwork uh, for this um, this pot holder now this one here I've got is a seven by seven inch and uh, it's just a little too small so I want to do a bigger one this one's pretty old so I mean this is in practice for eventually what I'm trying to build up to uh, with sewing is uh, to uh, make my own um, quilt my own uh, patchwork quilt so uh, I still have a, a ways to go before I even attempt to do a quilt but I'm going to uh, Cut this uh, down uh, so that I can uh, have manageable pieces and uh, do some sewing. Okay, now that I have uh, my my piece of fabric cut uh, the way I want it, it's uh, all um, nice and squared out. I've got uh, 90 degree angles on either uh, end and at the top and the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is that, uh, like quilters always say, like trust your, your straight edge after you've measured. So I know this is, this is square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, ruler and cut five inch squares. Um, I'm going to count down because as you can see, each, each square represents uh, one inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down to five, five by five and, uh, and that's uh, the size. I'm going to go five by five for about four blocks. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. You can see I've uh, actually <clears throat> got the squares cut. <laughs> got to put the blade protector back on my rotary cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew. I'm going to first iron them and then sew, uh, sew these pieces up. Um, I mean, this is an experiment, uh, for, for me because, uh, like I said, I've, uh, I'm just learning to sew and, uh, thought you guys would like to come along and see what I'm doing and what kind of mischief I get myself into. Um, the colors go together. So, I mean, I'm not too terribly worried about, uh, aesthetics, uh, you know, and it's just a pot holder. So I just want to see how well I can do this and whether or not uh, how much more practice I'm gonna need in order to tackle a uh, patchwork quilt. So, uh, like I said, I've uh, cut these to uh, uh, size so that they're all equal and even, and uh, so I just need to iron this and uh, get, the, get it ready. Okay, so I'm back. I've actually ironed my uh, pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put right sides together you can tell the difference between the right side and the uh, good side, or the bad side, I should say. So this is the right side, this is the good, uh, bad side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both, line them up, the top edge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew, I'm gonna give it a 3 8 inch uh, seam allowance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start away from the edge. Uh, I've got both my right sides together and what I'm going to do is just uh, do some back stitching to the uh, edge here. Uh, I'm going to set it and just do a couple of... Now I can go. And all I'm doing is I'm following my line, my 3 8 line here, so it's straight. And I'm going all the way. And I don't have a fancy dancy sewing machine. Uh, which is uh, fine, but um, for just starting out, that's uh, pretty good. This is this is decent enough. So okay, uh, I've got the the one piece together, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do opposite, but I want to ensure that my lines are going. My lines are going 
uh, vertically, like horizontally, and not like cockeyed like this because I want it the same. And this one's going to go on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this one together and uh, do the same thing except for in place them in reverse. And then I'll line up these edges and do the same thing. And go. Uh, you know like take your time I mean it's not uh, not um, a race here but uh, I'm learning uh, slowly but I'm not gonna rush myself I mean I want to learn it properly and uh, hopefully uh, do it uh, the right way so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these back to the to the um, iron and iron the seams down flat like the uh, seam allowance flat okay well I've got this uh, the two pieces joined and I've uh, flattened out the seams like uh, the seam allowance here flattened it down really well uh, ironed the heck out of it and now what I'm gonna do and this is where it's critical is that you want to line up your seams so that the points are actually uh, like sharp and they're they're right in there uh, and where they should be so that it looks like it's just like a cohesive piece of uh, material um i hope i'm doing this right but this because this is what i've been reading i've been doing a lot of research on on quilting on sewing and you name it been doing a lot of practicing so uh proof is in the pudding uh so we'll <laughs> see how it works out so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to seam this this length here and we'll see how uh, how sharp of a uh, an edge I get. Okay, so from what I gather, what you're going to do is you're going to take you're going to take your uh, your two pieces, and you're going to line them up, and uh, line them up as best as you can uh, on both ends. And what you're going to do is you're going to pin it. Okay, so now that I've grabbed myself some pins, uh, I got the top portion lined up, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin it on the seam allowance right there, just so that uh, I know that it's going to stay put. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the bottom seam so that it line both seams line up, and I'm going to pin that too so that it all stays in place. Now, hopefully. Like I'm only doing just the one edge, but uh, namely this top edge here, but um, hopefully it'll all stay, uh, stay together. Okay, so I'm gonna start at this end, move my set the needle down and press, put the foot down and I'm at 3 eighths of an inch again. And I'm gonna go for, do a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. I just have to adjust my foot pedal. Okay, so let's okay now I'm just gonna move this guy over because I do not want it getting in the way and pushing my foot pedal out of the way. Okay, proof's in the pudding. Did I do it? <gasps> Ta-da! I did it! Looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do... Uh, yeah, I even amazed myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron this top to the seam I just did so it's lying nice and flat and then we'll have a look at it. Okay, so after ironing um, the seams together, like this 
particular seam the, the lengthwise. Uh, I didn't do too bad. You can see that it's just slightly off, but all in all, I'm really pleased. I mean, it, I did a pretty darn good job considering I've never done this before. So yeah. So I'm looking forward to this. I know I kind of got these two cockeyed. I mean, I should have flipped this one over, but uh, like that's all uh, in the learning. So we'll we'll take a look. And in here, okay, as you can see, uh, I probably should have ironed this seam this way and this seam that way. But um, you, it, I guess it's, it's, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I've seen them just leave it like this flat or, you know, doing the seams this way and seams going this way, uh, like these particular, this particular seam would go this way. This particular seam would go this way. So, I mean, it's all in the learning. I mean, that's, that's the whole idea about taking up uh, an old skill, uh, just learning about it and, and, uh, just going out and doing it, trying it. So now I've got to figure out what else I need to go uh, and do. I've got to get the uh, the um, the felt or uh, the batting or whatever that's going to go here, and then I've got to decide on the um, the other side material that I'm going to be using for the uh, oh gosh, what's it called? The backing. Duh. The backing so I've got to figure out what kind of backing I'm going to have on this so but all in all this is pretty good okay so I've got my um, my sample here uh, my potholder uh, patchwork uh, actually basted to uh, some uh, batting here um, just left it where it's just a little bit overhanging uh, the main piece here but uh, I've used, uh, like I said, I've used bobby pins, uh, safety pins actually, for um, to keep the the top uh, piece on top of the the, the batting. Um, and what I've done is I've done a what they call quilters call stitch in the ditch, meaning you're going, you're putting your stitches uh, in the seam of your. Your patchwork and uh, I'm just basting it that way I don't want to go around uh, right now because uh, I want to choose um, I just want to adhere the uh, top uh, layer uh, top sheet on top of the um, the layer of uh, batting and uh, so this is a good way because I'm just going to stitch in the ditch here and I'm gonna go I'm gonna sew it down through here so basically I just go line up my uh, needle with the seam, pull down my needle and embed that, put my presser foot down, and then I'm just going to stitch along like inside the seam as best I can, trying to prevent like I don't have a walking foot, which helps uh, what it does is it basically it hops and it walks across the top uh, layer and with the, the feed dogs at the bottom here, what happens is that uh, if you don't have a walking foot, it's, it's going to shift the different layers. So what a walking foot does is it actually hops and walks and keeps the layers even as it's going across your, your quilt. But uh, like I said, I don't have one, so I'm doing the best that I can and with what I've got. But actually it wasn't too bad, this first uh, stitch in the ditch. And uh, I'm going to do that down here, going across the, this particular uh, pattern. And, um, but I'm not going to back sew. I don't need to right at the moment. But I'm going to give it a go and see how it works. And I'm just going nice and slow and staying within that ditch, so to speak. It is going to pucker. So I'm not uh, making any uh, bones about that. And I'm adjusting as I go. If uh, I'm starting to run off uh, course, and I'm just like I said, just going down through the the seam until I come to the end. And I'm just going to cut that off, and there you go. 
It kind of does look like a quilt. That's so cool. I like this. But if I had the proper and the right equipment, eventually what I'm going to do is when I'm ready to do a quilt, I'm going to change out my sewing machine uh, to uh, a better quality uh, sewing machine. This one is just a little Kenmore. Uh, it was basically just for me to hem, uh, just to do hemming for uh, pants or like little mending uh, issues. So um, now that I'm really getting into the uh, sewing bit, uh, I really want to uh, to up my game, but not yet. I'm going to build myself slowly, and that's what you should be doing, is build yourself slowly. Um, I've been told that uh, don't rush things. Take your time. Learn things properly, and that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, I finished basting, uh, and then I finally I quilted. Um, I sewed the uh, two pieces, the front side, which is my finished side, and the back side. And as you can see, I've done a pretty diamond pattern. I decided to, once it was uh, it was uh, basted on, um, I decided to quilt, uh, even though I didn't have the, the walking foot. But I did a straight line uh, quilt, and I got this beautiful diamond pattern uh, on the back and on the front. So it does actually look nice and quilted. <laughs> So I checked out my local, uh, my local Walmart and fabric stores as well and uh, discovered that uh, to finish off the raw edges, um, I either make my own or I buy um, binding, uh, quilting binding, quilt binding. So I decided uh, like $8 is a bit much for like three yards of uh, fabric. Like it's a double folded uh, binding uh, tape. So I decided to make my own and I just cut it four inches wide and then split it in half and then folded it over. Uh, um, uh, like I cut it in half to two inches wide and then just fold it in. And then, you know, fold it in half and then brought the seams into the center and then re re-seamed it, like re-steamed uh, the uh, edges. So what I'm going to do is I, I saw an interesting tutorial on how to do this. Now I hope this is going to be uh, the right way of doing it. Like I'm going to start pinning this just to see how it goes. And uh, what you do is you open it up. And what you're going to do is you're going to open it up and you can see how there's, you know, three lines here. What you're going to do is you're going to take the edge, the top edge of your, your binding, and you're going to line it up with the, the edge here. But because I'm going to be joining, I'm going to be joining the uh, binding uh, later on, uh, once I reach to get to it, I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to start sewing actually at the, at this first block here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up, take my needle, and I'm just gonna tack it on and do the same thing over here just to tack it on. Now the way this uh, this woman uh, did it uh, was pretty cool uh, the way she was uh, doing her um, her binding. So I'm gonna also take a, a tape measure and measure out a point of a quarter of an inch here so I can get I can do a, a miter uh, because what's going to happen is that it's going to it's going to miter to this point like so, and then what I'm going to do is once it's sewn, I bring it down and bring it this way. So, but you'll see that in the in the next uh, next bit. But I wanted to get this this started. So I'm not going to sew this portion because this is where I'm going to join everything. I'm going to join the, the binding tape at the end. Now hopefully I'm going to have, have enough. If not, I'm going to have to uh, add on. But hopefully I won't have to. So here you can see I'm a little set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch, basically stitch in a ditch. Sorry, I had <laughs> tape measure in my mouth. I'm going to stitch in the ditch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring myself to the corner of the pad that I've got 
and um, I'm just I'm going to bring it to a quarter of an inch away from the the edge. So basically, um, I want to take my tape measure, measure out a quarter of an inch. from the edge and make a dot. That's all I'm doing is I'm just making a dot. And I'll be doing that to all four sides. So, as you can see, I'm leaving enough room here for, uh, for me to join the uh, other piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my my uh, seam line here just to make sure that I'm right where I need to be there we go and I'm going to sew right right to that dot only now uh, it's a good thing to uh, from what uh, I'm doing here is to back stitch a bit just a couple of stitches and that's it Remember, I don't have a walking foot on this, so it's going to, and you don't want to pull tight because you don't want to bunch it up. So I'm bringing myself to that dot, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my pedal and sew right to the corner. I'm going to angle it and sew right to the corner. Make sure everything is lined up. Okay, so now I've done that. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it right here. Okay, now that I've uh, reached the corner, I'm gonna lift my pedal and lift my needle and pull it out and clip it. And so you cut it close, and then what you're going to do is how it's nice and mitered. What you're going to do is you're going to take your tape, your bias tape, and you're going to fold it over like so. So you're creating um, a seam the same uh, way that the corner is, and then what you're going to do is take your tape, make sure it's flattened out, and you're going to line it up with the top edge again, and you're just going to go on your merry way down this first seam on your bias tape. So, and you want to make sure it's nicely lined up and, and everything else and that it's not kind of wonky. So, but you want to make sure it's nicely lined up like so. And then you're going to go back and do your stitch in the ditch like in that first seam of your bias tape and you're going to go along your merry way. And you're going to continue that all the, all the way around. And just do a couple of back stitches and then just go merry way down the ditch making sure that it's all lined up at the top and you're going to do the same thing in the corner and you're going to do that all the way around until you come to the end okay so you can see I've sewn all the way around and what I'm going to do now in the corner here is fold it over to create my miter. And as you can see, it's formed a very nice miter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold everything over onto the other side, onto the backing, and move this over and fold it under and sew this edge all the way around. 
Hey, and I forgot to mention to you guys, uh, it's uh, very um, important for you when you're doing your backside to pin it and to show you how, uh, how I did the corners here. So what you're going to do is you're going to just bring this to the corner here, fold it out like so, and then you're going to fold it over so it's angled like this. So if there's bulk on the front and say it's on this side, then you want to do it the opposite way because you want to even out the bulk. And here I find that uh, my bulk is on this side, so I want to put the bulk on this side. So basically that's what I'm doing is I'm pulling it over, squeezing it down and going in the actual, the same angle as I sewed in the front and then just folding the bias tape over like so. So you're forming that, that miter, miter corner. And then you just pin it for now. To hold it and then sew along the same edge as what uh, was in the front, namely right along this edge, like right around, right close to this edge. Well, I finished, finished my uh, sewing and the back end and I'm done with my pot holder. It turned out really well. I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, I don't, didn't expect it to be perfect because uh, like I said, I'm just still learning. Um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm pleased nonetheless with my uh, first attempt. So, uh, you can kind of see how wonky it is a little bit because, uh, of how it was sewn. But, uh, all in all, I mean, I'm pleased because I'm learning to do something that I've never done before. Uh, I've done actually a pretty, pretty darn good job. So I'm, I'm pleased. So, I mean, take up a, an old skill. It's fun to learn. Uh, I'm learning on my own and uh, you can do it too. So go and enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.